Hi everyone. Um, the next video in the series um, where we're starting to assemble this GT40 replica um, is going to be on building up the top wishbones uh, that go at the front of the car. Um, if you've ordered the Deluxe Starter Kit, obviously the wishbones come in the kit. Also you'll find that the ball joints you can see there on the table uh, also come with it. And these, um, yours may be gold, these happen to be silver, uh, camber adjusters. And this is the ball joint. So the first thing to do in building it is, uh, like I detailed in the last video on building the lower wishbone, is to assemble the poly bushes. Um, once again, I'm going to be using the water-based um, lubricant uh, just to help fit them. I'm going to quickly whiz through that and then we'll get on to uh, the modifications required to the camber adjusters um, and fitting the ball joint in the, in the wishbone with the camber adjusters and how you go about mod uh, adjusting the camber on the car once you've once you built it. Um, some people seem to struggle to sort of understand the principle behind it. So I'll quickly put these ball, uh, poly brushes in and then we'll get on uh, to that section with the camber adjusters. Right, so poly brushes fitted. Now, the operation of these camber adjusters is that the camber adjuster goes through that tube on the inside then a lock nut goes oh, a lock nut goes onto the ball joint and the ball joint goes into the camber adjuster on the outboard you can see the problem camber adjuster is too long basically I designed these for another application and then gave the design to a company uh, to make them in large numbers um, and supply them for all sorts of applications. Uh, then when I came to do the GT40, I realised I couldn't fit that length in. So I had no option but to uh, modify this part of the wishbone, make it shorter. So that means these need cutting down. And the ideal length to cut them down to is to be one millimetre or so shorter than this bush length. That way you can be sure that the lock nut goes up and actually clamps this together rather than obviously having potential for free play. So that's what we'll go ahead and do now. I shall measure that and cut that off. Right, so there we go. I've trimmed that down. And it now comes up just shy of the end of the tube in the wishbone. Now when you uh, ever you cut through a thread, you're gonna probably struggle to get it to start. So it's a good idea to run the ball joint up through the camber adjuster the wrong way so that you can clean any swarf out and reform the bit of thread to where you cut through um, to make it easier to fit uh, the correct way when you put it in the wishbone. And there we go, it fits, starts pretty nicely. So, assemble it in the wishbone, from the inside. Lock that on the ball joint. Then screw the ball joint in. So 
So there's the wishbone assembled. Now obviously when it's on the car, this distance here is what sets the camber on the wheel. By making this distance greater, you push the top of the wheel out, so you reduce the camber. By bringing it in, you increase the camber angle. So when it's on the car, to adjust the camber, undo the lock nut. It's usually best to have the car jacked up to just take the weight off the wheel, but you can do it with, without doing that. Release the lock nut, spin the camber adjuster in the direction, in this case shortening it to increase camber, and then lock the lock nut back up again. And that's the camber change on the car. The reason why I did it this way is because normal methods of having a threaded bush in the wishbone mean that you have no choice but to knock the ball joint out of the upright, knock the taper of the ball joint out of the upright. And if you've ever done change ball joints on any car, you'll know that nine times out of 10, you completely knacker the ball joint doing that. Um, so this way means you can change camber really quickly uh, and without damaging the ball joint. Um, okay, so that's that for this video. Um, in the next video, I'll move on and we'll start looking at some panelling. I'll try and get some panels on the front so that I can then start assembling this suspension once and for all on the car. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, please press like. If you want to see more or get notifications when I do more videos, and they'll probably be coming quite thick and fast this week, um, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can see more details of the kit and what we offer uh, at our website, www.gtforte.co.uk. And we have quite an active Facebook page, quite a large number of uh, followers on there. And that can be found at uh, facebook.com forward slash gts40. Thanks for watching.